All right, let's go ahead and get started. So before we actually start creating our drawing, we need the contour, the basic idea of where are the trees and where are the mountains and what is all this stuff. And so I'm gonna give you a couple of options. The first option that we're gonna, you can use is, is tracing. Uh, I would, I'm gonna show you three different options, tracing and then gridding and then uh, hand drawing. Even tra when you're tracing, the better you can draw, the better that this drawing is gonna turn out. Um, the, the way we're gonna set this up is you're gonna print this out on some cheap printer paper. This is really thin. The thinner the better, this is just cheap. Uh, printer paper once again uh, We have our nice paper underneath that we're going to be doing the drawing on You want them to both be the same size or your nice piece of paper can be larger uh, And then what you do is we're gonna do a hinge joint. So this is all taped all four corners and Then we're just gonna tape this like a flap That we can peel back and you'd want to you know make sure that this is lined up now the camera is above me, so I can't tell how well this is lined up, but we would want to line this up as well as we can possibly get it. It's best, of course, if I was standing over it, but that makes it harder to record. But yeah, you want to make sure that this is lined up. If the paper, the, if the drawing paper is bigger than this, well, then you probably just want it square. You don't have to worry quite so much. But we're going to say that this should be close enough that it will be on the paper. And I'm taping the drawing at the top at two points so that you can peel it back. It's a, what's called a hinge joint. All right, so we can peel it back if we, as we need to. So those are the first two things we need to do a tracing. The third thing we need is transfer paper. Now, don't buy transfer paper. That stuff usually has a waxy film. And once you get that on your paper, you can't go over with charcoal. It will resist any charcoal drawing. So all this is, is something I've made with basically a charcoal pencil and a lot of, you know, a little bit of patience as I covered this paper with three layers of charcoal and then I used a circular motion with some tissue to even it out. It was the softest charcoal I could get, but then again, I rub it in and you do it like two or three layers until you get a nice even coating and now what you've got is transfer paper. So this is just charcoal on this piece of paper. It's literally just a white piece of printer paper. Now I'm gonna put this sheet between this and my nice drawing paper, and I'm gonna put it with that charcoal side down. Okay, put it in there with the charcoal side down. And I'm trying to get this, I want this to be lined up as well, as much as possible at least lined up to our top photocopy here, and we're gonna lay that down. So we've got three layers. We've got our photocopy, we've got our transfer paper with the, the dark side pointing down, and we've got our nice drawing paper on the bottom. Remember, you wanna wipe this in. If this was just loaded with charcoal, like light charcoal dust, the moment it touched this paper, it would get it all dirty. So you have to rub it into that surface so that it absorbs into the surface and it can lay on there and it won't leave scumming behind. You know, there might be a little bit, but not very much. And so you wanna rub in that charcoal to make it a nice transfer sheet. Then what we do from here is you're gonna grab a 4-H pencil. Now you might ask yourself, well, why am I using a pencil? I thought this was a charcoal drawing. Well, we want something hard enough so that it will press hard enough that it will transfer the image, the drawing. And so what you would then do is you're just gonna come over here and again, just transfer the drawing. Now the biggest thing that people, um, the biggest issue that beginners have is they wanna deal with every little detail. That is not what you want to do. Uh, you'll get lost in all the details or the minutia if we wanna use you know, the nice vocabulary word. We're gonna get just lost in all that information. So like all these little bumps of the distant trees are not as important as what is that basic ridge line shape, okay? The, uh, some things that might be important is there's a shape here caused by the trees where this is dark, dark over here and this is light. There's also a big shape here 
sort of like a rounded rectangle, or pardon me, a rounded triangle. That again is pretty important. But I, I want to be careful that I don't go nuts. Like there's all these little ins and outs. Just go for the biggest ones. Little tiny stuff you want to ignore for the most part because they again will get in the way of the drawing, they won't help. So that's how we want to deal with this is that we would, we can work on this a little bit just very quickly. And again, you want to be quick. The other thing that people do, they'll tighten up with this, you know, really slow, try to do every little bump, every little wrinkle, take six hours to, to trace this out, and then most of that gets destroyed. And so we just need to note down what is the most important. There's a dark shadow and then there's a light. There's a half tone, there's a light. Um, we want to start to break those down just like we do when we're drawing basic objects. Cylinders, spheres, cones. So if that information I was talking about half tones and or middle values, light values, if that stuff sounds like you know, that doesn't make sense, go back and check out the video on basic values. Basic values is something we use with every drawing we're ever going to make. So again, and keep this very simple as we begin to, I'm not going to do the tiniest little patches. That's a big patch of snow. I can keep that in there. Okay. But this little stuff, not a big deal. And it's going to get lost anyways. This little one, I'm not going to worry about it. You know, I'm not, I don't want to, again, I don't want so much information there that I get lost. These are overlapping hills. That's important. That this is in front of that, that that is in front of that. Those are important. All the little squiggles at the tops of the trees, not important. I can squiggle little lines later. Not, not that big a deal. So same thing with the trees. Sometimes people get in here and every little, every little nuance, um, again, those new, a lot of those little things are going to get lost. And so... When I'm doing this, I'm going to go ahead and simplify it and also work again as loose as I can, as quickly as I can. There's like three little bumps there that I just made into a triangle. Again, I want to be careful that I don't sit here for three months trying to trace out this drawing. Um, even this is probably a little more information than I normally like. Usually I do this whole little line, I'd maybe break it there and then put the rest of the line in to break it up later. You know, you want to, so you're using the drawing, you're not trying to trace every little bump, every little nuance. If you do, you usually lose it anyways. Some people are like, well, go, I'm not listening to him. Oh, look, I took me 10 hours, but look how great it is. And then they start like, get going nuts a little bit because then they start drawing and all of a sudden all this stuff that they took all that time with gets destroyed and you know it you know they're about to have an aneurysm you know because of the fact that all that work is down the drain so better to go ahead and again just very quickly get just the basic like this four or five little pieces I'm gonna make one big chunk out of that I can always split that up later we always want to start um, whenever we're drawing we always want to start more general and then get more detailed later. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to generalize all this complexity of different shapes. There's like hundreds of little families of clusters of needles that are making up these, these shapes of needles. And if I try to sit there and draw every last one of them, I'll guarantee you by the time you start putting va value over them and trying to create the, it's gonna get lost. And so you're just, you're gonna be wasting time. So just Again, simplify what we're doing. Simplify what you're doing as you know when you're drawing. It will be better. And I, I tell this to you because I have been, you know, that beginning artist. And when I first got into, into art, I think I was a seventh grader, and they had us doing these tracing techniques. And the other thing is that these tracing techniques are again, they work better the more you know, they work better if you actually know how to draw because you have to clarify this. In other words, you have to get in here and make them better and design them differently and change. And the more that you're like holding on to what you traced like a, like some sort of a emergency raft or, you know, some sort of, you know, like it's a crutch or something you don't want to let go or the railing on, 
you know, some sort of some sort of stairway or something. What's going to happen is you're going to end up with a mess. And so, you know, and then you're going to, you know, start to wonder why you took all that time and again, it can suck all the fun out of it and I actually gave up the first class on drawing when I was in seventh grade because they wanted us to, they were having us grid and trace. And they were presenting that as if that's the way it always worked and it's not. And even worse is they didn't tell us how to trace. Like again, how do you trace? We do it like I'm doing it, where you do it really loose. So that way you can always change it later. You just have general ideas of where stuff is. Like there's a whole clump of flowers here. I'm gonna simplify this into some, it's going to be like a polygon that I'm going to simplify this into because I just want the general idea of where this clump is and the general idea of how big it is. There's a whole bunch of little weeds in here and again I'm going to make them just like these little very simplified little grasses because again I'm just trying to mark their, where they are. Where in the drawing is this? How big is this opening? This is low-lying grass and these are taller uh, you know, bits and pieces over here. And so I will go ahead and mark these in terms of where they are. And this little stuff of the grass, I'll worry later. That's not near as important. So, and again, let's go ahead and peel this back. The other thing is you have to, you have to uh, hold down pretty pretty hard when you do this, but it's also going to be, you know, fairly light. When you look at this, you go, wow, that's, that's kind of light. Well, this is just the starting point. The reason that we went and did it lightly, so at some point we're going to have to come back in here now with a charcoal pencil, not with a graphite pencil. So I'll grab a charcoal pencil. At some point we're going to have to come back in here and re and go ahead and reestablish all this stuff. So you can still have to use the reference as you try to then clarify these different areas of this drawing. And again, these are just, these are markers. So again, this is just, uh, can give us some clarity of where this stuff is and we can modify the shapes later as needed. Okay. Um, this is again, is coming down the ridge line. This is that big patch of snow. This is a little, a little crevasse over here. You know, this this right here is, is this crevasse. So, again, I would have my my reference beside me looking at it while I'm then clarifying. This is my little, you know, my, my, my tree. You know, again, I, I'm not going to sit here and worry four or five, you know, for four or five days, try to get everything, you know, traced just exactly. Otherwise, you're going to, you're going to lose your mind. Again, we're going to take these, these basic little ideas and we're going to use the reference. We're not going to make an exact duplicate. Uh, we could, if we wanted to do that, you know, get a Xerox machine, Xerox, and save yourself the, save yourself all the, all the time, save yourself all the, you know, go and do something else. But we're going to go ahead and change. So we're continually changing a little bit of the stuff that that that, that we we noted, and again, I would have the, the image with me. I'm actually doing this just from, you know, I'm imagining what this might look like or my, what, I want, what I might want because I've drawn quite a bit. That's why you want to learn to draw because you have much more, you, you, have, you have much more that you can do with stuff. You can say, hey, I, I want this to do that or I want these branches here. Or, I, I wish I had a little more foliage over here. Well, guess what? There we go. You know, I can go ahead and change this to be what I want it to be. That kind of comes out a little bit more than I want, but that's all right. You know, we have the lake that's back here. We then have, in that distant shore, we have the, the trees along the shoreline, which are really just triangles, right? Those are, that's the trees of the distant shore. We then say, okay, what about these trees? Well, again, these are, again, just pine trees. We can go ahead and want to look for that trunk in there. And it, it, it appears a couple of times. It also disappears as well. And so we want to keep that in mind. And 
as we're drawing that, you know, maybe I want this to, you know, bring it, come in and then disappear and then come back in again, pick up just a couple branches. But, you know, we want to be, for those who haven't, you know, looked at or taken the tree class, take the class on trees. You'll learn so much about trees that will really help your drawing. I don't like that. I actually took some liberties with that. And so I'm going to go in here, grab my kneaded eraser, take that out. You know, so again, I, I'm kind of using this as a jumping off point, and that's where drawing really gets fun, is where you're not being literal. You're going, hey, here's what I want this to do. I want this tree to come up so that I get a, a look where this does this. The eye moves around the tops of those trees in this little sort of spiral coming up and over. So again, this is, and if I was doing this right, I wouldn't, I would keep my hand out of this stuff. And I'm a lefty, so I would work, you know, right to left. But, you know, maybe there's another little tree here because I want to close down that, that space a little bit for compositional reasons. So I can add a little tree there and that tree there touches this tree. And, Together they merge. So you've got this large tree and this large tree behind them. And then you've got this smaller tree and a tree behind it. And then you have this large tree behind that. And all of a sudden we start to get these shapes that emerge. This is the little tree. I can't see him, so he's going to come up a little bit more. These are the grasses. Uh, some of the notations that we did. Okay, well, what about some of those notations? So we had this is this 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 high grass over here. This was then where some of these little flowers are. So again, we just want enough information. This was where the, where the tall grasses were. This is where the other grasses were. Where there there these were tall right here, and then there's a space of low lying grass, and then you have some of these tall stuff and there's some sagebrush back in here as well and so you can just start to have some again some fun with this but understand that I'm being very loose with this idea you know of, of, of what we what we started with which was and again I could have the photograph next to me so I'm not kind of winging it that I'm not just kind of flying by the seat of my pants, as they used to say, that I'm not shooting from the hip. That's, that's, I like that one too, uh, that expression. But the idea is, is that we want to be able to understand what it is and clarify the tracing. So that's one way. Again, we, you know, we, we've got information that we can then very quickly go into. And again, I would do this very light. This is much darker than I normally would do this. So that again, I can still modify stuff. I can be like, well, I want to cut into this. Maybe I want this to cut in and show part of the tree. And maybe I want this to cut in to show just a little bit of tree up there. You know, some, and, and so we can, we can start to cut in and out like, oh, this comes in. There's cut little sky holes. You know, I can, I can design this tree and modify it any way I want. So that's the tracing method. Start very general. And, and make it general enough so that you can see what you're doing. Because if I start going, oh, there's this little thing, and this little thing, and this little thing, and this little thing, and there's this little thing, and 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 this little thing, I don't know what any of that is. So the more general that you can be, and sometimes it's hard not to get lost. Like when I'm doing this, sometimes I have to do some notation, like, okay, this is foreground, this is a darker tree, and I need to, to know, I need to know that these, that these, you know, where this stuff is, and what mountain is, and so I'll just make these a little bit darker. Now again, I'm going much darker than I normally would, but these are notations so I don't get lost. This is giving the puzzle pieces, if you will, that this is not the same as that. That's lighter. You know, I normally wouldn't have that back there. would not normally have a tone. I'd probably, you know, take that out a bit. But I, this, by doing this, by, cut, by bringing in some of the puzzle pieces, it makes it easier to keep track of where you're at. 
that's one of the hardest things to learn and usually it's because we're going too detailed in the beginning that we get lost in all those details or minutia if we want to use our vocabulary words and minutia just means little details so little stuff that's all detail means little stuff don't get lost in the little stuff we want the big stuff so by doing this I now can see you know this family against that family and I could still change things I mean that, we want options so you know if I felt this got too big or if I felt this goes too dense or if I felt like it's too it's too th thick too close to the ground that because again I'm just kind of making this up uh, again I could have the photograph but I, I'm not doing that I'm just kind of playing with it I'm having, I'm having having fun playing a game using the idea of the tracing and then you're jumping off into something that's more interesting trying to make it again just a, a more interesting image to you and hopefully the viewer as well and so again I can don't think you have to follow this thing to the letter as long as these things are in the proper place I can do all kinds of stuff and that's the way to make tracing fun like in the in the uh, in my drawing I actually take these two trees out because I think they're in the way of the mountains I think they become like a fence and so I took those two out and I redesigned a little bit of what's going on here that's what you can do you can trace the basics and then when you flip it up you can go I don't like those two trees they're, they're, they're going out of there taking them out you know this one will stay and these will stay but the others going out so this is tracing that's how you're gonna want to do it if you want to do the tracing method um, if you haven't taken my other classes power of line um, the magic of values in shading and the trees and the rocks I would recommend you take that you'll get a better drawing in the end and this will make more sense so we're going to come back and we're talk about another method if you want to do something besides transferring it remember to transfer we need the photograph taped like this so it can so it can be like a flap and peel it back you have the nice drawing paper and then you have your your little transfer sheet that you've made by just layering charcoal and smearing it around and layering charcoal and smearing it around until it's nice and as uniform as you can get it and that's tracing all right we're going to come back in a little bit and we're going to talk about gritting